Hello and welcome to a ComNet Tech Tips video. I'm Guy Walker. Today we're going to be talking about SFP modules. These little guys can cause quite a headache when designing a system, but we're going to show you how to take the pain out of that process with a quick ComNet Tech Tips video. Let's start with what is an SFP module? It stands for Small Form Factor Pluggable and it's a modular hot swappable transceiver interface for media converters and switches. These replace the older GBIC modules previously used and are sometimes still called mini GBICs. They are most often used to send Ethernet data over optical fiber cable, but there are also copper versions with standard RJ45 connectors. But rather than sounding like a Wikipedia page, let's talk about what all this means. Basically, when trying to transmit over optical cable, these are your laser transmitter and receiver, and they easily plug into your media converter or switch with no additional configuration. It's a very simple concept, but there are a lot of factors to take into account when selecting the proper SFP for your application. But we'll get to that in just a minute. First, let's talk about when you need to use an SFP. The two main applications in the security industry are first, for when you need to run Ethernet data longer distances than the standard 100 meter distance limitation of the CAT6 cable. The second most common application is for lightning protection. Optical fiber is ideal for both these applications because you can run data miles and miles and it is not conductive so it won't transfer a lightning strike into your head-end equipment. So, if you're going to be dealing with optical fiber, you're probably going to be looking at SFPs. Now, there are still quite a few devices on the market today that use what we call a fixed optic. You can see that the optical connector on this model is actually soldered onto the board. This transmits the data just as well as an SFP, but now your device is fixed. This one will always be a fast Ethernet, two fiber, single mode transceiver that can go up to 20 kilometers. Now, when we look at this device with an SFP slot, the only thing defined by the device is the data speed that the port is capable of transmitting. Comnet has ports capable of 100FX, 1000FX, also called gigabit, and even 10 gig. So if you are working with existing equipment, the first thing you need to figure out before selecting an SFP is what speed your device's port is capable of transmitting. When it comes to selecting an appropriate SFP, there are a number of important considerations. So if you ask yourself or your customer these questions, you'll be able to figure out exactly what you need. First, what type of fiber will you be using? There's multi-mode fiber and single-mode fiber. Next, how many fibers will you be using for each point-to-point -point link? There are SFPs for a single fiber link or a link using duplex fibers. You also need to figure out the data speed you will be transmitting over the optical fiber. There is 100FX, 1000FX, also called gigabit, and 10 gig, although the vast majority of edge networking gear doesn't need 10 gig speed. Next, figure out what type of connector is preferred. Optical SFPs use either SC or LC connectors. A single fiber SFP can use either an SC or LC connector, but a two fiber SFP can only use LC connectors because of the limited size of an SFP. The last main question is the distance you need to transmit over the fiber. Most SFPs can handle distances around 2 to 20 kilometers, but there are special considerations for gigabit data over multimode fiber. Normally, the standard only allows up to 550 meters for this scenario, but ComNet's special SFP46 allows 2 kilometers of distance for gigabit data over two multimode fibers. On a more advanced level, the wavelengths of light that the SFP uses to transmit the data can also come into play, but that's usually only when you are combining SFPs from different manufacturers. That can be a more complex topic that is best left to a quick call to our design center or tech support teams. And just to blow your mind, ComNet also has extended distance Ethernet SFPs that can transmit data over 10,000 feet on a single twisted pair of copper. This limits the amount of data, but it sure is a great solution when you have no other options. One application note to consider with SFPs is pairing appropriate models. When you only have one fiber to transmit bidirectional data, the SFP must use one wavelength of light to transmit it in one direction and a different wavelength to transmit the opposite direction over that same fiber. 
That's called wave division multiplexing. Don't worry, Comnet makes it easy to figure that out. Just remember, when using one fiber between two SFPs, you should pair an A unit with a B unit. The model number will tell you which it is. And it's even easier when you are using a duplex optical fiber between the SFPs because both units are the same model number. Okay, we've gotten through the technical aspects of SFPs. Now let's do some show and tell to demonstrate all the different ways to use them. Let's start with the combo port. The combo port is used on many ComNet switches, and it's actually a standard RJ45 port paired with an empty SFP slot. You can use the copper port normally right out of the box, or slide in an SFP. This automatically disables the corresponding copper port, so now you can transmit over optical fiber. No other configuration is necessary. Here's a close-up view showing you how to insert an SFP. It will only go in one way, so you can't make a mistake. Connecting your fiber is just as easy. Here you can see the duplex LC connector is easily inserted into the SFP. To remove the fiber, just put pressure on the clip and pull. Then to remove the SFP, just flick open the bail clasp and pull. It's that simple. You probably noticed most of my examples include transmitting over optical fiber, and that is the most common application. So, why do we make a copper SFP? Well, here's a switch that has empty SFP slots, but no corresponding RJ45, like in our combo ports. The SFP1 from ComNet allows you to now use that port as a standard gigabit RJ45 port. And when you have multiple SFP slots on a device, it allows you to consolidate different types of connections onto the same switch. Here we have our copper connection. We can add in a two fiber multi-mode gigabit connection. And we can also add in a single fiber single mode gigabit connection, all landing on the same switch. Now you're probably seeing all the flexibility that using SFPs allows in your design. And I hope this Tech Tips video helped you understand it a little bit better. Thanks for watching, and as always, feel free to contact ComNet for all your transmission needs.